Hello everybody, what's up? It's Papa Bail. Welcome to my channel. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to share uh, my ideas and other people's ideas that they share with me. And one of these ideas is to, can this motor, can the output run another motor? Um... And I'm saying as is or even through a diode or uh, a rectifier diode like so. I'm going to say no. I don't know though. I haven't tried it yet. But I'm, I'm going to say no. Um, and I, there's no stipulation like I can keep the power running on this first one as long as I want. I don't have to turn it off or anything. Um, will this one start to move? I have another Hall Effect sensor, which I will hook up so it'll act like more like a switch. I'll plug the base into the ground, and it should pulse like a switch, like a magnetic induction switch. Because I'm I'm not gonna hook a transistor or four transistors up to this little thing right here, not yet anyway. <clears throat> I mean, I could. Get another one of these little breadboards out and put the four transistors in, hook them up to the base. Well, this is how I run the circuit. This is the power supply. And the power supply goes into the coil. That's that's usually not what most people do first, but that's what I do first. It comes out the other side into the switch. And as long as the switch is somewhere between the power supply is positive and the power supply is ground, it's okay. I found that out as long as it's in a direct circuit and not some branched off part of the circuit. Um, as long as the path of least resistance has the switch in it, you're good to go. All right. And that's, I'm just waiting on the magnets for this little 3 inch rotor. It's going to be epic. I'll get some tinfoil for that. Um, <clears throat> this is a 4 filer coil as seen on TV or on YouTube. It's 50 turns, 4 strands with 32 gauge wire. Now I see a few ways you could set this up. You could go four strands parallel, which I can guarantee you will be powerful. You can go one strand trigger and three strand series um, with rectifier diodes in into each coil. So. <clears throat> You, send, you essentially have it triggering itself in series all the way through using DC electricity. So that, I don't know. Is that better? <laughs> I don't know. Like, we could set it up both ways. <clears throat> and another way to set up, you know, there's six transistors. I'm using one for each strand. And I've only got these two coils hooked up. I hooked up the other ones and it's like it either there's there's bad connections in there or less is more if you get my drift um, but having run them all in series and have one connection to the breadboard per coil because there's six coils six transistors six connections that would be awesome too I think and have them all be triggered by this one switch or uh, Hall Effect sensor right there. Have it all hooked to that. So it's nice and simple. So the timing isn't off. You know what I mean? Just you got to make sure the positioning's right. And before you go, <coughs> you can do it one of two ways. <coughs> you can either put it directly on the magnet which is the easiest way 
and you're gonna get you're gonna get good results doing that or you could turn it on have it not glued down and move it around until you find that sweet spot but you are playing with electricity I just want you to know so you don't turn it up all the way you just turn it up so when it gets hot you know you know you can let it go you know you just grab this little stand right here and if it's not glued down you move it around and if it gets real fast you you stop like okay I'll glue it down right here I like doing it that way sometimes because <clears throat> sometimes an offset coil can actually add a pretty powerful you know punch but that's that's the objective with this right now is to get this will generate about 60 to 70 volts of DC electricity we want it to go well that's after it passes through a, a rectifier diode because I've done this already I'm well, not this part but I've, I've measured how much DC comes out of this coil it's about 65 65 volts and it does get like perma sucked out of there when you hook it up to a load if it's not running it'll drop straight to zero volts instead of tapering down I've known a few I'm, well, I've noticed a few phenomenon like that and a simple explanation I just I'm, it fascinates me seeing that happen it's like man something just sucked the power out the reading is zero <laughs> and then you know you look down and you see that maybe your clip isn't connected or something's not where it's supposed to be like all this you kinda don't want that these ends so close you want to spread out like that because it's going to rattle <clears throat> get close together again okay so this is it right here this is the spoiler all three of these are connected and only two of three of these are connected 126 and 132 because when I connect the second 26 it kind of bogs out uh, doesn't get anywhere near as much power as just having the bifiler hooked up in there instead of using all three strands. So it's five. Five strands and then this generation coil is one strand. All the way through. It's 22,000 turns of 32 gauge wire, one strand. I think the dimensions are wrong though because the magnets are not that big. So it's like cutting a hole. It's like dividing. It's, I'm not getting maximum output from this coil because one, the reach is probably only to right about there. Or maybe even less, you know. I don't have a core in there. So. Yeah, it's going to be uh it's going to be less than satisfactory so I'm going to have to change the dimensions of the coil a little bit and make it so my core will fit in <clears throat> and then I think it will be so freaking awesome like cool like I'm thinking if I do it right it's going to generate between like three and four hundred volts on its own just just by itself And that'll be that'll be a record for me. It'll be sweet if that actually could happen. And what I'm thinking about is making it, you know, about making it smaller, longer, making the hole in the middle a little smaller so the cores will fit nicer, and bringing the top down, the sides in a little bit, bottom up. You know, I'm going to make it about. 45 millimeter diameter instead of the 
diameter it is now, which is much more than that. Okay. So I'm going to set up the multimeter and I'll be right back. All right, so this is the DP DC output of this coil. It's not very stable. Got some negative integers there. But I'm going to turn on the power. I guess with some speed going through it, it should level out. Start increasing steadily. Wow, that's not very much. Uh, I don't know how I got 60 the last time I checked it. Anyway, that's, that's how much we're putting in. About 50 watts. I'm getting some good output in the rotation department thinking that's going to be about 700 rpms right there between 16 and 17 volts output from this coil Alright, I cut the power a little bit. Let's see if we're going to go up or down. We're still fluctuating quite a bit. It looks like we're going up. Anyway, maybe that is enough power to run this coil, but will it work? That's the question. Let's get a quick tack reading, and then I'm going gonna, gonna to call it for the night, I think. Yeah, I smell uh, enamel melting. I think my coils are getting really hot. I can't even see the electrical tape getting... Yeah, it is hot. Holy smoke. And it's the, it's the 32 gauge just getting really hot. Yeah, that's hot. This is warm. 26 gauge and 32 gauge one is warm. This is that's hot. This is cold. Wow. But you saw like how fast it was going. 
for something that big and that fast is it's pretty good. I'm thinking we're gonna get about fifteen hundred at least from this little thing. And this is like a <laughs> this is a mythical coil right here. I've never actually got one at spec to work. Um, I got one that was about 200 turns to work uh, with the trigger coil and the diode setup. It was really choppy. I mean, it was choppy, 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 choppy. It wasn't smooth like this. It was choppy. <laughs> And it was loud and squeaky, but you know what? I think it worked. Like it worked the first time I plugged it in, it worked. It was nice. Anyway, thank you very much. Peace out. Have a good night. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Like, leave a comment. Share. Invite other people to come along. As we try and get this started, we're going to get this moving. Should move pretty easily using power generated from this coil. Can we do it? I say no. But we're going to find out. I'm going to find out. I don't know for certain, but a, a buddy of mine, and I'm, I trust his intellect, he says no. And I'm. I'm I'm like okay, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it anyway because I would like to see for myself that the electricity being generated from that coil is pretty worthless. I mean, if you just want everybody, everything to be illuminated, then you can use it. If you wanted to run something more complicated um, I think it has to be more stable than what we're doing here that's how I would say it it has to be more stable <laughs> and uh, I don't know I mean this the 32 gauge wire might might do really good You can see the inner and the outer, the, like the, the edges of the magnets on both sides of the magnet. That's awesome. There's no power going through it right now. I don't know. You think that, that the electromagnet will show up on that? Should we give it a shot real quick before I turn this off? Alright, you, you uh, finangled me into it. We'll do a 12 volt demonstration of this. You kind of see like a an outer ring around the edge there. I don't know though. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe a faint like glow? I don't know. Seems like the closer you get, the worse it is. See, now you can kind of see it. You see that? Way up here you can see it. Coming out the back. 
So I, you know, I don't think it comes right out the back, the actual field itself. It come, it goes up, like a very powerful magnet, and loops around probably in like that. Anyway, thank you very much. Peace out. Bye now.